Welcome back. And of course, that was uh, the news updates. And right now, we're going to have a conversation, very important one, about the need to develop a framework, an all-inclusive one, so that all students across the country would not be left behind. A conversation spearheaded by Mr. Achu Homachi, who is in the studios with us again. He's a member of NACA and also the interim chairman of GINA. Good morning, sir, and thank you for joining us. I hope you're doing well. Thank you very much, madam. I'm, all right. I'm very grateful. All right. Now, also in the studio, we have Gabriel Palam. Um, he is uh, the head boys prefect at the Okuyapiman School. And he's suffering from what? Low vision. And so he also joins us, as well as Paulina Braco. She's a student at the Senior High Technical School for the Deaf. And so she's here with her interpreter, Irene Date. And so they'll also be having a conversation with us. So all of you are welcome, by the way. And I'll start off with you, Gabriel. So you have low vision. And so tell me um, how easy or difficult it has been um, coping with studies in school, even before COVID-19. Okay. First of all, I'd like to greet your cherished viewers, and thanks for this opportunity. So living with low vision is not easy in Ghana. Mm. And school, schooling has been quite difficult for some time, even prior, before, prior to COVID-19. Right. Okay. And before that... Um, Government attention to students with special need has been on the low side. For some time now, it seems we have been sidelined mm. and we are left to do everything on our own. So now you procure your own books. Government does not provide textbooks, exercise books, teaching and learning materials. You have to do that on your own. Mm. And it's quite expensive because all these items are also not made in Ghana and you have to import them. And there are hefty duties imposed on such items. So even as a low vision student, Learning with assistive technology, which is one way we find um, learning comfortable in Ghana, it's very difficult, very, very difficult and expensive. Okay, yeah. break it down for me. When you say that you have to get different textbooks, um, does it mean that you cannot use the regular textbooks like every student? And, you know, explain it to me further. What's different about these other textbooks that okay. you use? So with my condition, the normal textbook has a font size of 12. Mm -hmm. But with my condition, I need a font size of 24 and above. Okay. And with that, you need more paper since the text are larger. So if an, a regular textbook with font size 12 has 500 pages, with 24, you need about 2,000 pages. And coming by this, um, going to a printing press to procure such items is very difficult. So usually, we send soft copies to um, companies outside Ghana to do their printing and then ship it back here, and which is quite expensive to do. Yeah. And all that is not included in your fee, so the school should be able to procure those books for you? Those items are handled by our parents. Yes. By your parents? Yes. So that comes at a different cost? Yes, please. Um, the school should be aware of this. I mean, have they made any attempts? Did well, your parents even raise this issue, first of all? This is not the first time. It has been here since time memorial. I'm wow. not the first low vision student in Ghana. Yeah. And this is the status quo as it stands in our country. Mm -hmm. Persons living with disabilities have been sidelined on every front. And on the education front, is, is very bad. Yeah. For instance, in this free um, SHS era, um, government give text, uh, textbooks and exercise books to our sighted colleagues, okay? And for that, it's free. Mm -hmm. But here's the case, the government does not even have any plan for us. We have to do everything on our own. And for instance, one other medium we use is the Braille. And as you all know, Braille is not easy to come by, and it's quite expensive. Yeah. Virtually everything concerning persons with disability is expensive in this country. And this is a clear indication of government's lack of priority for yeah. persons living with disability in this country. Do you also use the Braille? Yes, I, I use the Braille. But now with the advent of technology, we are trying to upgrade and migrate from the Braille. Yes, I please. see. Yeah. Wow, there's, there's a lot I'm learning here because I thought that Braille was only for the people whose vision were completely gone. But we'll come to that. But let me speak to Paulina Braco. Again, I said she's a student at the Senior High School, uh, Senior High Technical School for the Deaf. And so having challenges hearing and communicating as well. So um, her interpreter, Irene Date, would help us with that. So what I want to know from you, Paulina, as well, what have been your challenges, um, you know, as a student? Before she came to the school, they said before the COVID-19, most of the interpreters left. And 
and she had to depend on the TV, the e-learning to be fed. But when looking at the program that is being telecast on TV, it's like the, the SHS. Okay, okay, sorry, Irene, uh -huh, yes, sorry. I, so, so if you can start, because I don't think that our viewers heard anything, so she should tell us again what she just told you, her challenges, even before COVID. Since school, before the COVID-19 started, and they had to stay at home mm. and be using the e-learning mm -hmm. to study, she realized that they have excluded the senior high school from the e-learning program. Uh -huh. So the e-learning program is only beneficial to the primary and the JHS. And sometimes if she tries to follow the ones that is being telecast, she doesn't understand what is going on. Why does she not understand what's going on? Because there are, there are no interpreters there for the senior high school. Okay, okay. So she's talking about studying on TV and the fact that there are no interpreters. But before we even go to that, she mentioned that, um, you know, the e-learning has been made available only to the junior high students and also to the primary school. Does it mean that for her school in particular, uh, since they came home, there has not been any form of e-learning for all the students? They do. Okay, we're, we're trying no. to... No. There hasn't been any form of e-learning... No. ...for any of the students. No. And so, so, like she's saying, there has been difficulty, um, you know, understanding what's being taught on TV because there's no interpreter. On her own, with her teachers in her school, did they attempt to at least keep them educated even whilst they were home? They are school. They use the, the blackboard to teach and explain to them. But okay. with the TV, it's not like that. So it's difficult. It's difficult. Okay. Okay. All right. L let me come to Mr. Achu because two issues, or actually about three issues, have been raised. The fact that for students with visual impairment, they have to get their own study materials. That's not made available by the school. And so their parents have to spend extra money on that. Since you are a member of NACA and also uh, the interim chairman for GNEC, tell me more about this. What has been the plan from the beginning and why are students having to buy their own learning materials, especially uh, students with special needs? Yeah, thank you very much for this opportunity. Let me first say on behalf of my organization, that's the coalition GNEC, and on behalf of uh, children with disabilities in Ghana for that part, children with special needs, express our profound gratitude to the management of TV3 for giving us this opportunity to have this conversation, mm. very, very important conversation. We are very, very grateful to you. Yeah, to answer your question, uh, it is true. It has been a challenge all over the, over, over the years that persons with disabilities, for that matter, children with special needs, when they are in schools, materials becomes a problem for them. Uh, we don't have textbooks in Braille in the, in, the, in the junior high secondary schools and university. The low vision, they don't have large prints. It has been a canker, a very challenging one. And we have been uh, always talking about it. Mm -hmm. Even though Ghana Education Service and Minister of Education, sometimes they provide certain materials, they are not adequate at all. And it, 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 it makes learning difficult for our, our students. So what they are saying is true, that they have difficulty in acquiring this, for, uh, these uh, materials to learn. How can you learn, you are in the secondary school, you are in the university, you are in the primary school, how can you learn without textbooks? Exactly. It, 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 it's, it's, it's a challenging something. Mm -hmm. And, and the, 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 the advocate is that the children must be given the, 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 the textbooks or whatever, the materials in accessible formats, but like a... Uh, Gabby is saying they don't have. For example, books are provided for the regular students, mm -hmm. the certain students, but for them, they don't have. Exactly. Meanwhile, you're going to write the same test. You're going to write the same examination. 
uh, Wayak examination, the same thing. Wayak is, Wayak is not going to say that because you are visually impaired, you let me give you the certificate free go. Mm -hmm. You are going to, it's a competition. Now, you don't have the materials to enable you to do that. So that's why we are, that's why always we have been advocating. We have been advocating that Ministry of Education for that matter, genius, and other stakeholders should come in. Exactly. Let me put on record that we are, of course, grateful to Ministry of Education for that matter, genius, that they are doing their best. We are not saying they are not doing anything. No, they are helping us because I'm aware uh, students with visual impairment or for that matter, disability, they don't pay fees, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So they are helping us. However, we are still pleading and advocating that materials must be provided for them because, you see, SDG Go4 talks about accessibility, equity, and equality. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, and equality in education. So what we are saying is that there must be equity. There must be inclusiveness in terms of education, yeah. in terms of teaching and learning materials, in terms of all opportun learning opportunities. Yeah. And that inclusiveness is what we are talking about. That equitability is not, is not there. So that is the difficulty we are, we are finding itself. But we are advocating that Ministry of Education and for that matter, genius, even though they are doing their best, we are asking them to do more. Okay. We'll come, back. we'll come back to you, Mr. Chu, but back to you, Gabriel, because uh, Paulina mentioned that she feels as if secondary school students are left out of e-learning. You have already talked about the difficulties you are facing already as a student with a special need. Talking about e-learning, you are also in senior high school. You are the head voice prefect. Was there any attempt by your school or has there been any attempt by your school um, to at least get you all to benefit from e-learning whilst you were home? All right. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I I'd like to say that um, for my department, the social science department in school, our, our head of department created WhatsApp groups for various elective subjects. Mm -hmm. So that's one way they try to give us tuition whilst we are home. Mm -hmm. So WhatsApp platforms were created with various um, class prefects assigned to each, okay. and then they, they supervise what happens. So teachers come every now and then. We arrange um, times for lessons. Okay. So um, sometimes, because we also have um, visual impact in school, with the WhatsApp, not all the lessons are in text. So sometimes teachers record audios so we can play and listen and follow with the discussion. Okay. So that's one little thing my school has done, creating WhatsApp platforms. So I'd like to con um, commend, commend them. them for that. At least yes. they tried to rope you in. Did you ever try the TV uh, learning materials as well? And did you also face similar challenges like Yes, please. Um, with the Ghana Learning TV, I must be frank, since its inception the first week of April, it took journalists at Ministry of Information Presses to keep on hammering the fact that there should be content created for persons with disability. Mm. At the start, sometimes, for instance, in an English lesson, they can put a passage on the screen. And as a blind person, no one behind the screen is reading for you. Mm -hmm. And then they ask a question and they expect you to answer and be able to understand, which doesn't work that way. Because since we can't see, we, we usually do our learning and um, observation through hearing. Because okay. that's our sense that we can use and apply. So once items are displayed on the screen with no description or illustration, we are not able to comprehend the lessons. And it's, it's just simply a waste of time sitting in front of a, um, a television mm -hmm. and then images appearing on the screen without knowing what's on the screen. So I think at the start of the Ghana Learning um, TV, um, persons with disabilities were not factored into their criteria. But now, um, about last week, I noticed they introduced the sign language then now some of the words or the lessons are written in text, mm -hmm. but still it's, 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 it's still not it, enough. It's not enough because I, for one, mm -hmm. the text form that they write, I can't read because it's small. Okay. Unless literally I'm um, one inch away from the television, which wow. will not be benefit because that will even affect me further and will reduce my vision. So that means you've not been able to use Ghana Learning no, no, to not, study at all? Not effective at all. So you were solely relying on WhatsApp um, audio materials from yes. your teachers? And um, notes we were able to write from school. And then sometimes I have this friend in who, he has no access to television. Mm -hmm. So we use this medium of um, phoning each other, conference call, and then we have some questions we put before each other. Then anyone who has an idea, we discuss. That's one way. Or well, that's one method we are also trying to help because our sighted colleagues are way ahead of us. Mm -hmm. And if, if we are to sit and wait for the government to provide content, 
uh, I'm sorry, we'll not be able to succeed in our final exams. So we are, we are taking matters into our own hands and trying yeah. to improvise. But you, I think the mm -hmm. Ministry of Education can do better, create better content. Because exactly. the minister said, you introduce radio programming for visual impairs. As yeah. we speak, it's here to start. Well, yesterday I saw an announcement that said that it was going to start. And so I believe that that should happen because then that would help you um, a lot more, right? Yes, please. Yes, okay. Please. What about you, Paulina? Because, I mean, after talking about the challenges with e-learning and all of that, so how have you been managing whilst you've been home? How do you study? What do you do? Especially when you need explanation from your teachers about a particular subject or anything. It's boring because the teachers don't stay with her. They stay at different places in town. She only depends on the TV. Mm, and even that has been a challenge too. And some, it's difficult because some of the distance, they don't have the interpreters that interpret the lessons mm -hmm. to her. Is she a final year student, by the way? Yes, please. Okay, so final year students have been asked to come back to school. Okay. I'm waiting. She's a final year student? Yes, final year. Yes. Okay, so that means yes. Okay, I'm also learning something new. So final year students have been asked to come back to school, um, you know, to finish up the, the syllabus so they can write exams. Is that better for her? And even though, you know, she has to go back to school, what are some of the things that she would have hoped they'll put in place um, so that learning can be made easier? She's still afraid because of the coronavirus that is still in the system. She thinks the government... Okay. ...building for senior high school students that could ease uh -huh, because they are congested in the classroom and as they'll be going back to class, she's afraid. Well, they, I think they also gave them a measure that they should reduce the number of students per class, um, especially for senior high schools as well. I believe the number was 30 or 20, pardon me, but it should be one of those numbers. And so then moving forward, I mean, if all the measures are put in place and they're asked to come back to school, what I want to know is, is she okay with the fact that because she lost out on education um, whilst at home, she'll get the opportunity to catch up so she can write her exams? Is that a better option for her? Yes. Okay, that's a better option. Let me go back to Mr. Joseph Achu. And so, again, you are saying that there should be a framework uh, for these students. Yeah. Um, why do you say so? And what is this framework that you're hoping they can come up with? Yeah, thank you very much. Like uh, Gabby is saying, uh, there must be a framework for, 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 for children with disabilities so that the e learning they can benefit. Mm. Uh, on the TV, like you're saying, when they were showing it, if you are blind, you are sitting there, you can't, there's nothing you can do. You can't get it. So you will not benefit, you will not benefit from the e-learning program. Uh, I want to commend Minister of Education for that when the Ghana Education Service for introducing the e-learning in a way. We, we appreciate the efforts. Um, that's why we identify the gap. Ghana, Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition identify the gaps. That's why we came out with a program or a project. We are partnering with Genius, and we are grateful to Genius for, for giving us the content of the e-learning program. Mm -hmm. We sourced the funding from ISIWA. Let me take the, this opportunity to prof express our profound gratitude to ISIWA. They are helping us with some funds, and we are partnering with we are partnering with Genius so that we can brave questions, uh, brave, brave books for from the content of the e-learning. E e-learning program. Mm. And we're also enlarging the print. Gabby said that uh, they don't have uh, books in, in large print. Mm. And we are working on that. My organization is working on that. So that we can cater for the needs of these children as far as the e-learning is concerned. Because the information must be accessible to them. Now as it is now, they don't have access to the information as it is on the, on the TV. They don't have access in, to that information. So that's why GNEC is working with Ghana Education Service to braille the content 
for the blind children and also to produce large print for the low vision so they can benefit from this program. We are also taking, taking care of the deaf. So we are doing what we call audio demonstration of, of, of the lessons. Mm. Uh -huh. That's what currently we are doing with uh, Ghana Education Service so that we can cater for their needs. So this, this what, these are the adapt adaptations. If you do things like this, then we, 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 we shall be able to meet their needs. Mm. But the way it is now, there's a gap. Absolutely. And I'm happy to hear that Minister of Education is saying that they are coming up with a program to, to cater for their needs. I'm very, exactly. very grateful. Yeah. Yes. Gabriel, how do you feel about going back to school to complete the syllabus? Frankly speaking, um, first of all, thank you for the question. Frankly speaking, it comes with mixed feelings, okay? Now, cases are soaring high. When we're asked to come home on the 22nd of March, we're around, we're hovering around 100 and something. Now we are in the 9,000 heading to 10,000. So it comes with mixed feelings. But I like to say um, the Old Students Association of my school is fast tracking processes to procure um, Veronica buckets and um, hand washing equipment, which will facilitate our living on campus. So I think that gives a, 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 a bit of comfort, knowing that this is what they are planning for us. So I think if we adhere to the um, preventive measures, um, everything will be okay. So fr frankly speaking, it's with mixed feelings, but I pray and hope, and I say again, I pray and hope that everything goes well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we've also been joined by Dr. Bertha Sewa Ayi. And today we want to find out from her. She is an infectious disease specialist on the show, but also that's a prof profession. Uh, we want to find out from her what she makes um, of this conversation. And moving forward, as we're having final year students go back to school, what do you think should be put in place to ensure the safety of these special students as well? So, Doc, you're welcome. needs. We have uh, a student with low vision and we also have a student from the Senior High Technical School for the Deaf. They have talked about the challenges they are facing with e-learning and also, you know, generally with education. And so as you're going back to school now, what do you think can be done, of course, of course to safeguard their health and safety? Um, so Bella, is the question for me? Yes, that's for you, doctor. And I'm talking yes, in relation I to COVID-19. challenging but manageable given that um, COVID-19 requires um, some social distancing and I don't know I think I, I think that might be quite a bit of a challenge for these students since they cannot see very well how they're going to manage the social distancing make sure that they put their masks on and all that and as they were discussing they don't even they don't even seem to have the textbook so I'm my thought is that they should be giving special examinations so that they are not tested on the same level as their counterparts who have been studying and moving. Okay. All right. So as expected, some technical challenges there, but we hope that we can get Dr. Bertha back. And she's given us uh, more of a scientific explanation as to how we can protect these students. And until she gets back, I'll go back um, to my team uh, for the conversation. So, uh, Gabriel, back to you before I even go back to Paulina. Moving forward, what are some of the things, apart from the textbooks? Um, going back to school, you're worried about COVID-19, probably how you're going to, you know, socially distance yourself from other people while staying safe. What are some of the things that you hope can be done um, to help with your education? Disability in education, I think it will it will help because I, I believe it's a lack of prioritization. Frankly speaking, mm. we are always second fiddle. They always make promises, and it never happens. At times, government tries their best. I must say, sometimes they make the effort, but it's not enough. Let's not kid ourselves. Let's not pretend everything is well. Let's be truthful. Things okay. are not going that well. So I think government should pay more attention and should provide the teaching and learning materials because you are equally citizens. We deserve equal rights. Mm. We are not below the law. We are not above the law. Yes. So I believe we should, the um, pillars of education as it stands now, which is access, equity, and quality. The equity is missing. So I think government should pay more attention. Deliver right. same to 
persons with disabilities and persons without disabilities. Absolutely. Yes. Back to Dr. Betha. I'll come back to you both so you help us with how you intend to manage with social distancing. But Dr. Betha, welcome back. You were saying. Thank you. Oh, yes. I was just saying that they should be, like they're saying, they've, they've not been able to access the same educational material. So, I mean, besides the health, making sure that there's a level playing field, they should be giving special exams and be giving extra time to study to be at par with their counterparts. Absolutely. But do you think that for these schools, especially for uh, students who are visually impaired, should the schools be reopened or do you think they should stay home, especially um, because of social distancing difficulties? Yeah, I think that because of social distancing, they should be given some leeway um, because of the difficult, inherent difficulties, they should be given some leeway in terms of reopening. And like I said the other time, Bella, I think we're all trying to push against the barrier. We know that there's an outbreak, but it seems um, there's a lot of socioeconomic factors that are forcing us to take certain decisions ahead of time. And um, these are unique, as we say, special needs children, and we shouldn't force them into a uh, the same um, box that we're asking average people to get into. So I think they should be given some time before they reopen. Okay. And if that's the case, how do you both intend to manage with social distancing? And I'm talking to you, um, Paulina and Gabriel. Paulina, would you speak first? Do you totally understand all the rules that have been given, the measures that have been put in place? And in your school, how are you going to manage that? Yes, she thinks the school should be open now. Governors has uh, announced the reopening of their schools. But how will they stay in their school? Mm -hmm. She thinks that the uh, virus should be over before they go to school. She thinks the virus will be over before they go to school. Uh, but, but then they, they should be a thermometer to check their temperature. Veronica Bucket, that could help them to support them so that the sickness will not spread in the school. Is, is her school a boarding school, if I may ask? Yes, so yes. that means that she is a boarder? Yes. Okay, so in that case, looking at the dormitories and how congested they are, even though it's still going to be just the final year students that will be there, what does she think that can be done um, to protect them as well? The rooms are small, uh -huh. so they need extra facility in the school so that they can do the social distance well. Hmm, interesting. What about you, Gabriel? Okay, with the issue of social distancing, in my school, for instance, now that only final year and form to go trackers are going, there will be space. Okay. But I don't expect every single dormitory, there'll be a teacher there to supervise children to stay two meters apart. It doesn't really happen in the boarding setting. You know, for instance, let's say in the boys' dorm, boys' boys, come on, they will crowd at one corner and be talking. Mm -hmm. No one will be there. So I think um, with the social distancing, we would have to do um, attitude or something. And for instance, um, with persons with disability in my school, for, mm -hmm. my school, for instance, mm -hmm. we need assistance from fellow students in finding our way through the school. And mm. Bella, if I may say, if you pay a visit to my School, the premier school for training visual impairment in the second cycle level. Yeah. The road or the, the terrain is so terrible. I, I, I'm, I'm being frank here. Okay. Because it's, it's, the road is that bad uh -huh. that even human beings walking find it difficult. And see a blind person walking on a, on a, on a road ridden with manholes, literally. Yeah. Or for want of a better word. Tripping, injuring yourself, and then you, you end up spending classes hours at the sick bay nursing your injuries mm. with such a bad way. And then your friends are already you are behind. And now, because of such conditions or, or terrains in your school, you are spending all your classes hours at the sick bay, whilst your sighted colleagues are ahead of you and increasing the gap. So I think measures, so with the issue of persons with disability, I think facilities should be provided. Mm. And my school, Okaf, my school, is, 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 is one school that when it comes to training persons with visual impairment, it, it, it stands out. Okay. So 
I think TV3 should pay a visit to the school and look at the conditions there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like a school that has visually impaired. With open drains, can you imagine working at night? I have a challenge with darkness. Mm -hmm. Working at night from preps, then all of a sudden, I just noticed I was working in a gutter. Hmm. Like, I didn't feel it, like it was that big. No covers, nothing. And this road has been under construction for three years now. The road minister has been there. Even the president was there a month after coming into office. But I'm telling you, if you pay a visit to my school, it doesn't speak well of inclusive education in Ghana at all. So the issue of social distancing, here's the case, the road is bad. We need our friends to assist us. Here's the case, with the assistance, they are inches away from us. Because so the they have of, to touch you. Yes, you okay. have to hold us and guide us through the terrain. And I, I don't believe the issue of social distancing can be achieved to a large extent. In, in your case, school. is this at every point? So every time you have to move, a student has to guide you? Um, in my case, I, I am fortunate enough to have a little, a significant amount of vision. Okay. So during the daytime, you are fine. With, I'm okay. But with those who can't see at all, especially my blind colleagues, uh -huh. they need person. Even with, with their white cane, they still need human assistance to, to navigate their way through the school camp. And it's so unfriendly. Lots of gutters, rocks. It's a mountainous area, so uh -huh. you can imagine with the topography of the land, like it's, it's so unfriendly. It doesn't speak all of, of persons mm. with disability having education in Ghana at Absolutely. all. Yes. This is so interesting, yeah. but we'll continue the conversation shortly and we'll bring in some more of Dr. Bertha uh, to speak to some of these, uh, these issues. But you can also join us via social media at TV3 Ghana. Let us know, especially if you are a student with a special need, what do you think can be done moving forward and what are some of your challenges? It's COVID-19 360. We'll be back. Welcome back to COVID-19 360. Today we're talking about inclusive education for all uh, with a special focus on students with special needs. I have a few of them in the studios with us. Paulina Bracco is a student at the Senior High Technical School for the Deaf. And also we have Gabriel Palam and he is the head boys prefect for Okuyapiman School and he has low vision. And so they've been taking us through some of the challenges that they have faced as students with special needs. In the studio as well, we have Mr. Joseph Achu um, and he is, you know, um, the interim chairman for GNEC and also a board of NACA. And we'll be talking about the framework that is required to enable all students or all children to benefit from equal education. But one thing that I want to find from you, Mr. Achu, find out from you, Mr. Chu, is the fact that, um, you know, he's saying that even to move around, social distancing is a problem. And again, sorry, Dr. Bertha is also online with us via Skype, also speaking to the needs of these students. So, Mr. Chu, he says that moving around will be a challenge, looking at the social distancing directives and the fact that they require support to move around. And, you know, she's talking about crowding in the boarding houses and all of that. What I want to find out, these challenges obviously will pose as a problem when they're writing their final exams. And so don't you think that maybe for these special students, there should be a different way of grading them and also giving them the opportunity to be admitted to the next level, unlike the regular students? Yeah, thank you very much. No, we, we want to be with them. You see, we are talking about inclusiveness or inclusion. So we don't want this kind of segregation. Mm. We are saying that measures must be put in place whereby we can all be put together <laughs> and enjoy the inclusion. So what we can do is that for we, 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 uh, my GNEC has issued a statement last week or thereabout, and we are saying that any measure put in place must be inclusive. For example, like we are talking about person with, uh, with visual impairment, social distance is, is, is a bit challenging over there, like Gabby say. So what we can do there maybe is that one, we provide synthesis effectively mm. so that both the sighted student and the blind student use it. Then we also ensure that we give education to the sighted student that uh, they, should, they can mingle with the blind, but use the synthesis. Then number two, the blind students must also, when they are working with the whatever, they should hold the elbow of the, of the sighted guide, okay. not the hand, because always we have been that we don't shake hands. Mm -hmm. So you hold the elbow of the person, the guide. Because here you may not contract it, but as you are going to hold, you use a sanitizer. But you're so, still very close to the person. They're yes. still one meter distance or yes, more. Yes, yes. But that's why you have to use a sanitizer and the ma uh, nose mask. Mm. Those are the other areas you can do. Okay. So, but completely social distancing will be a challenging because definitely you need the support from somebody. And I'm saying this 
sensitization must go on in the school so that because we are not careful, the certain students are going to share the, 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 the company of the blind. And that's the concern, because even yes. the regular students are complaining about difficulties with e-learning. Yes. Some of them don't have access to internet. Some of them, unfortunately, are not even benefiting from the education. So even if the regular students are complaining, how much more these students who unfortunately have been cut out yes. uh, from e-learning, yes. whether completely or partially, because even for the TV learning as well, it was only recently that they introduced the sign language um, you know, and all of that. So that's why I was asking if maybe you don't think, but even before you answer that, let me come to Dr. Betha to speak to the suggestion that you made about holding the elbow of, you know, the other student and also using sanitizers. Will that be enough to stop the spread? Um, I think that would definitely be a very, very useful addition because we know that the sanitizers, basically the alcohol in it kills the virus. Um, and so I think that would be a very, very useful measure. Okay, but moving on, I mean, what other things do you think can be done? And I'm talking from, you know, the infectious side um, of you. Perspective. I mean, well, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm very, I feel very empathetic for the stories they're sharing about the, you know, the different drains in the school and leading to the school. I mean, clearly, that is a risk. Uh, but what quickly comes to mind is that Ghana is about 63 years after independence and we're work in progress. Um, the kind of achievements that people in developed countries have achieved for their learning impaired students, they've been over several centuries of development. They came over time with people lobbying, you know, the Kennedy family has had issues, you know, lobbying the U.S. government to get certain things in place. So I see that going forward as a, as a group and as parents, that a lot of lobbying has to go on with the uh, uh, parliaments and government so that these needs, like this is a great program, airing something that we didn't know that even though this is a school for learning impaired students, they have all these physical challenges on, on their campus that could increase the risk of injuries and infection. So I think they need to keep talking because the whole country, sometimes we think the whole of Ghana is Accra and Kumasi, but sometimes if you travel just about 50 miles away from the capital, you, you, you everything is so rural. I mean, mm -hmm. everything, the schools, we have people even trying to get simple chairs and for, for students to sit and study. And so I think the, the country as a whole, um, it's good in the sense that it means down the road we can measure the improvements we've made. but. I think the sanitizers, holding of hands, and of course, they should provide masks in all the schools. And um, somebody has to be made responsible for COVID-19 management at the school to make sure that all these supplies are being made and also that social distancing is enforced. Um, and also they should have COVID-19 education. I yeah. think once the students are empowered, um, there'll be less watching over them in terms of what they need to do. Okay. The other question would be for the school of the deaf, I, like you mentioned, um, you communicate with your lips as well, right? Do you communicate with your lips or is, is it part of sign language? She said yes? No, we use the sign language. Yeah, but the sign language, I was asking that there was a time when there was a complaint about sign language, you know, working together with the movement of the lips. Is that true? Okay, that's true. So then I believe that in some of these schools, Dr. Bertha, they may not be able to communicate effectively if they wear the mask all through because it would affect communication. I just want, okay, so the, the, uh, my doctors in the corner are also agreeing. So in such a case where we're saying we have to wear nose masks, and all of that. How do we manage with these students? Because if the teacher has to communicate yes. and take off the mask and all of that. The, then without the mask, their social distancing even has to be a, a bit more. Because, I mean, now that we know that the virus stays in the air for a while, and the other time I was explaining to you that the masks is to make sure somebody who is infected, that the, the virus or droplets from them would collect on the inside of the masks and protect everyone. Then their social, if they don't have masks, then their social distancing has to be more. But I'm assuming, and I could be wrong, that there may not be many students at the school either. So social distancing could be, a, I mean, they may have to go to 
I mean, instead of three feet, they would have to insist on at least six feet distance. Will the face shield work in their case? Will that protect them? Yes, that, that would be excellent. And it's a clear one, and so it shouldn't impair their vision anymore. So that, that's an excellent idea, that they should be the ones wearing face shields if they can't use the face mask, because the face shields do work. They stop droplets. Mm. Okay, Paulina, do you know about the face shield? Okay. It doesn't look like she knows about the face shield, by the way. Yes. Oh, she does? Yes, please. Okay, so do you have any fears about replacing the nose mask with the face shield? She says the other one is better. The face, the face shield is better. So she thinks that it would be a great idea to replace it. So no fears at all. Yes, okay. At least I know that sign. That means yes. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Ashley, coming back to you. I mean, I was asking about, you know, regular students even struggling with e-learning. And now we have the special needs students um, who may not have benefited from it at all. And you're still talking about matching the regular students, well, elbow to elbow, uh, you know. So don't you think that that would be a bit unfair on their side? Yeah, thank you very much. Like I'm saying, it will not be unfair. What, what there is is that, like I said earlier, that provisions must be made. Mm -hmm. You see, with, with persons with disabilities, when it comes to persons with disabilities, all things you do, you have to adapt it for them. So that whatever you do, they can assess it. So like I was saying, GNEC, we observe that there is a gap in the e-learning process. So for the blind, we are brilliant. Mm. For the low vision, we are enlarging the print for them. So that they can assess, even the covert education, the covert education, we are brilliant it. You, you, you would have to, we can hear you clearly, so if you can just put your mask back on, okay. please. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. So, we, we, we are brailing it and enlarging the print. So, this quarter are some of the, the things you can do for them so that they can also access the information and then use it. What are we doing to ensure social distance, distancing as well? And in the cases of students who may still have to rely, you have made a suggestion about touching the elbow and also using the sanitizers. Uh, is there an institution that should monitor and ensure that this actually happens in these special schools? Yeah, thank you very much. With the deaf, they can practice the social distance because they can see. Mm. So they can practice the social distance, except that they may not use the, the, the face mask, like they use the eye shell like we are mm -hmm. saying. But with the blind, or for that one, low vision, they are, their social distance is what we are talking about, that using the able and all that. So it must be supervised in the schools. When they, as, they, as they are going back to the schools, Teachers must be strict on them, supervise them properly, especially when they are going to meet with other regular uh, students, so that they can also be protected. In fact, it's very, very important. So when the teachers are there, they must supervise them and, and, and make sure that they are protected, use the uh, whatever sanitizer properly. And when they are also go going out or they need any support, they want to move about, they, they, use the, they hold the elbow of the, of the setter guide so that they can prevent uh, diseases from, 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 they can protect themselves against any disease. Okay. All right. Well, um, I, I believe that whatever it is that Mr. Chu has suggested, uh, along with the students as well as Dr. Bertha, um, we can stick to that. It's been quite an eye-opening conversation with our students here. And so um, thank you all so much. I don't know if you have one more thing or any last thing to talk about. Uh, before we wrap up on this? Yes. Okay, Dr. Th Chu and then Thank Hilda. you very much. Um, I want to thank uh, uh, TV management team again for giving us this huge opportunity to have this conversation once more. I thank you very, very much. Uh, I want also to thank uh, G Ghana Education Service for allowing us to partner with them to use the content to, uh, to, for our children to bring the, bring the questions or bring the books Braille, uh, enlarge the, give them the enlarged print for the low vision students. And also uh, the audio, audio version we are talking about, they have given, Genius has given us that content, we are grateful to them. We want to assure all the stakeholders that let's all be on board to protect these children. The last one I want to say is that, you know, the society, there's a model, social model. Social model proponent be, be, believe that the disability is not, is, 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 is not a barrier, it's not a difficulty. 
the most difficulty, the barrier, is the social barriers we are creating by, by society. The impediments we are putting on the way of, of the of, of, of person with disability. So we are encouraging everybody, and we are advocating that policy makers, all stakeholders, should remove all barriers on the way for, of, of person with disability. Then we give them the support and make sure they are included. We are, they, are, they are included in all activities, all framework we are developing, national framework we are developing, everything we are doing. Let them bring. Let us bring these children on board. No child is left out. Uh, 1992 Constitution, Article 25 of 1992 Constitution, enshrine the, the right of education mm. there for all Ghanaian children, including children with disabilities. So we are, want, we are pleading that everybody must be on board. Everybody must make sure that these children are protected, they are supported, they are enhanced, they, they are helped to enhance their academic work because they, will, they are also citizens of this country and they will be responsible citizens tomorrow to contribute their quota to okay. national development. Thank All you very right. much for your opportunity. Thank you. Paulina, you also wanted to say something, so tell us. Okay, so want to give a suggestion okay. that the SHS, the government, the, for instance, the classes are uh, they are, the total number of students in the school is 100. That's the final year student. For instance, if they should reopen school and they uh, share them into the classes of 25-25, what happens if the teachers are not there to cater for the rest of the class? Because initially they join them together and teach them in group. Mm. Okay. So that means that there are limited teachers. Yes, please. They need to bring more trained teachers to help them. They need more trained teachers yes, to help yes. them. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what will make them comfortable. I see. Okay. All right. Very, very interesting suggestion. I, I must say it's a good one as well. Gabriel, you want to say something before we go? Yes, please. Okay, um, go ahead as well. Um, now that schools are about to be reopened, I think I'll take this opportunity to commend the old student union of my school, of my school. Um, they set up an emergency COVID fund to procure personal protective equipment and then hand washing equipment for my school. Mm. And I think that's a great initiative, even though government has um, assured us that they will also do that. I think I'll take this opportunity to thank them, the national president, um, like Asante Bequin, for this wonderful initiative, procure um, Veronica buckets, hand washing um, soaps, um, sanitizers, and all those kind of, so I think going back to school in my case, I think, uh, um, Things are being put in place, so uh, okay. I hope reopening will be successful and then no outbreak will happen. Yet. All right. Yeah. Dr. Betha, um, your, your final words, uh, maybe some advice generally or in particular to this topic uh, before we wrap up on this session. Well, I applaud the teachers and the, the staff who came with them for the way they're insisting that, you know what, we're not going to let these um, learning impaired or visually impaired students to be left behind. And they're giving the necessary pressure to take them along because, yes, they contribute very, very valuably to society. And I think that all the necessary efforts would have to be put into place to make sure they're going along with their other colleagues. And I'm almost thinking that maybe a special task force has to be put in place to put attention on the school and make sure that all these little concerns that they have in terms of their infrastructure and the way that, you know, the road that leads to the school is well taken care of. Okay. Because recently, one of the um, ministers of, uh, I think there's a, a somewhere in southern part of Africa, somebody with no arms, no legs, and I believe even deaf, just won a seat to be a parliamentarian by just pushing her way forward. And so th these are the human capital that God has given to this country. And we must give them all they need to succeed. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Bertha Sewa-Ai.
and she is an infectious disease specialist. We'll talk to you, God willing, tomorrow. And to my team as well, very grateful to you for coming into the studios and sharing with us your plight uh, whilst dealing with COVID-19 and everything in between. So we'll be right back to read some of your messages. Keep watching as COVID-19 cases.